Six games to go in the Irish Premiership season and we have guaranteed ourselves a place in the top half of the league after the split. We've got a problem though. The last five games are now going to be against the best sides in the country and for the most part this season we've been losing heavily. Yes, hello and welcome along to part 50 of this Build a Nation story, Lifting Spirits with me, Daniel. We bring up the half century in style with Distillery today as we have secured our first top half finish, but it is likely to only be sixth place. It does mean we will get a crack at the European playoffs again and we are in the final five games of the season going to be playing all of the top sides back to back. Not generally a recipe for success for us so far this season, but if you're looking Looking forward to seeing if we can change that as we play our final game of the normal season against Dungannon before the split and the first game against the top half sides. Then please do put a thumbs up on it. We'll take a look at what's been happening since you were last here. And thankfully, most of our squad has now had a holiday when we had two weeks off a little while ago. And we're now going to get another ridiculous spell. After those 17 games in two months, we're now going to have two and a half weeks off before the league split commences. But first, we have got to talk about what has been happening here. It's been a very exciting couple of months. It's been, again, a little bit inconsistent, a little bit topsy-turvy. And I say inconsistent in terms of results, which is a fair point. But we have generally beaten the sides we're expected to beat. So based on our level of equality in the side, I would say maybe we have been consistent this year. Although we did take a little bit of criticism just a couple of weeks ago because for the first time we had gone six without a win in the league, seven in all competitions. Our tactics were getting criticised, we were getting talked about in the media, but then we played a couple of bottom sides and bounced back. What I do want to show you though is since you were here and the few games before you left off last time is what the last five games of the season are probably going to be like because in a league split... We're going to play Coleraine, Linfield, Glen Torrent, Ballymena and Larn. Well, we basically did that in the six games that we didn't win. The only difference is we played Linfield twice instead of Larn and we didn't win a single one. But in the four games since you were with me, a comprehensive 2-0 defeat at Ballymena. It was a bit hard to judge because we got another red card late in the first half. Sean Daniels sent off, two second half goals put us to the sword. And we'll never know if we had a chance of getting a point. Away at Linfield, Jonathan McElhatton got a consolation against his former club. But Cammy Palmer and McKee had put them 2-0 up already. They were comfortable in that game. And then back-to-back -back wins, much needed wins against two of the bottom half sides. Away at Crusaders by three goals to one. McElhatton with a hat-trick there. And then at home to Dungannon, he got a brace this time with Killian Heaney adding a late third. Dungannon, the opponents again today, back-to-back -back games pretty nice way to finish the regular season in truth so let's go and get straight into that one we'll go through to the fixtures there is a lot for us to look forward to we are seven points clear of cliftonville the side we've leapfrogged from last season but we are seven behind balamina who have got a game in hand albeit that game in hand is against linfield which they probably won't win but it does mean that we are cemented as the sixth best side in the league we're nowhere near that top three. Glen Torren are massive underachievers and Ballymena, they're doing really well. They've still got that money from the Albert Press sale. All of the sell-ons come in with that. So they have invested well. They're improving as a club and they've had a couple of European qualifiers too. All that money makes a difference. So four professional sides and Ballymena yet to topple. But let's worry about Dungannon today. They're on their way back down. We're going into our first game of the day. Let's go and pick the lineup. We'll be back in a second to run through it. And this is the team we're going for, which I think you would agree is our first choice 11. It has been when everyone's fit this season. We have got the two new signings on the bench from January. Taylor Hart has done really well, to be fair to him. Not managed to pop up with goals or assists, but has made contributions off the bench and was really good in the Intermediate Cup. He played and scored four goals in one game there. We also have Phil Jeffrey there, who's played a couple of games with differing performances. We threw him in against Balamina away, which was maybe a bit difficult. Everyone was knackered. The squad was poor. He didn't do that well. But then against Dungannon, played really well last time out. So he's got a little bit of a mix, but he's contributing. And for a free loan signing with no wage contribution, he's been a really useful addition. So no complaints about him being here at all. Our 11 for today, as you would expect, Ethan Ross in goal. Dobbin and Bell, the fullbacks, with Orkin and Williams at centre-half. Bell has signalled his intent to leave at the end of his contract, which is just over a year. 
So we're probably going to have to look at selling him this summer if a good offer comes in. We'll wait and see if that happens or not. Whitehall and Daniels, the midfield duo, they've been really good in recent months. And then Latifa and Scott on the wings, Barry Coffey in the number 10, and Jonathan McElhatton, 25 goals for the season. He is improving magnificently. He's been the best trainer almost every week. And he has scored over one in two, which is all you can ask for at this level. So we've got ourselves some good players. We've got a decent bench compared to normal. Now, can we make it count? Our final game against easier opposition before the end of the season. Let's see if we can get three points and go into the league split in style. And here we go. The final regular game it sees three changes for bottom side Dungan and Swifts. Wade and Campbell amongst those coming in. I'm pretty sure Campbell was there back in FM19 when we managed them in the head coach. I'm not sure there's many other familiar names in there other than Josh Robinson at centre-half. It's a side that have generally yo-yoed in this save. They've been up and down twice already, I think. So let's see if we can beat them again. Into the first half, we know we're going to finish in the top half anyway. But we'd like to finish in style. I'm a little worried about our confidence moving forward in the season because we are going to struggle for the next five games. So I'd like to keep a little bit of positive energy in the club. And three wins in a row would be the perfect way to do it. Well, it's been a very quiet start here, but with eight minutes on the clock, we have got the ball with Curtis Bell at the back. Orkin finds Daniels and back to Bell again, keeping it nicely. Not really trying to rush it forward, not trying to get on the attack too soon. We're just keeping the ball and making sure that they have to work. They have to run as Whitehall goes back to Williams and Dobbin. Nice football again into Daniels. Again, patient. The build-up is fine, but it's another one of these long key highlights, which I hope will lead something good for us. Williams gets it from Dobbin. We're getting pressed now. Orkin can play out from the back. Why to Bell? Are we finally going to cross the halfway line? I want to get excited about something. Bell gets it again. No, Daniels to Scott. Here we go. Over halfway. Waited for the right ball to McElhatton. Brilliant move. The finish wasn't there, but forced them out. Played really good football. Got them to press us, then played the counter over the top. It's not worked from a set piece though, as Kim Nelson has headed in for Dungannon. Their first chance of the match is awful defending. We had men there, he's still got a free header, and we're 1-0 down against the run of play. We're back with a quarter of the game gone, and we're not really having a threat. Scannell's got himself in at the other end. It's another shot just wide, but I don't know what's happening to us. It's another one of these weird defensive performances. We do have one every couple of months, but I'd like to fancy us to get back into this. Balamina are winning, so if we lose this game, there is no chance even at fifth, which was a very outside chance anyway. So it's a long ball forward to Curtis Bell. Can we get on the front foot? Because so far, we've looked pretty poor in this one as Daniels gets the ball to Williams. And it is something that becomes a challenge managing in Northern Ireland. You go from this extreme intensity of playing every two or three games, as we mentioned, having real struggles with fitness, to now having players lacking match sharpness because we're not having many games. McCall Hatton blazes that one over the bar. Not really had any glorious chances yet. But at half time, we are going to be trailing. We've had more shots, but we've not created anything clear. And we probably deserve to be behind. So let's go and talk to the lads. Point the finger, show some desire. We've got a few of them to react, a few of them motivated. Now let's see if they deliver on the pitch. Well, instead of delivering, we've got yet another injury. Lewis Scott, how many times this season has he picked up Knox? Convy will come on for him. It's been, what, five minutes in the second half? There's not been a massive threat yet. I will go attack him when we make subs at the hour mark. But for now, I want to trust these lads. They are creating enough. But Muggle Hatton's missed a couple of half chances. And we're not really showing much from set pieces. So I am going to make those changes now. We're going to go attacking. We're going to take off Sean Daniels, who is on a yellow and anxious. He'll be replaced by Taylor Hart. That's the benefit of having quality substitutes. McCall Hatton struggled, so Leon Boyd is on for him. Got to trust the substitutes to make an impact. Orkin will come off for Phil Jeffrey. We'll leave the last one five minutes in case. But it's 1-0 to Dungannon. It is a disappointing display. We could really do with finding some form here. As Convy the sub on the left to Hart. Finds Leon Boyd. It's a nice turn. Curling effort just wide. I thought he was going to try and drill it in at the near post. Instead goes for the curling effort. It doesn't work out. And with 20 to go. One more change. Let's bring off Barry Coffey for Killian Heaney. Scored in the last match against Dungannon. Can he do the same today? We're going to encourage. We're going to try and get some positivity in. The morale shot. And I don't know why. It's been really good the last couple of weeks. And at the moment, it's not delivering anything at all. Let's demand a bit more. See if that reacts better. Not really. 
As Dobbin's got a throw on the right-hand side. Four minutes to save ourselves. He needs hit the woodwork. It's off the bar. And he's out for a goal kick on the left-hand side. It's going to be time-wasting. It's going to be slow. And we know we're going to be frustrated here. It is 1-0 to Dungannon. We've been attacking. We've been the dominant force. And we've probably been FM'd in the grand scheme of things. Five shots to 15. We didn't hit the target enough. Our striker wasn't in form. And it is something I do want to say about McCall Hatton. While he has scored a lot of goals this year, they generally come in twos or threes. And he has had probably, what, 15 games where he's just been awful. So it is a problem somewhat. We do need to have a sub who's better next year. So if he's not in form, we've not just got Leon Boyd coming on and scoring, what, two goals a season. We need better up front. We need a better squad. And for now, it's a disappointing day. Let's go and find out who we've got in the league split. Sixth place is going to be our limit this year. Well, Lewis Scott is out for three to four weeks. And at the moment, that's not actually too bad because we won't play another game now till the start of April. We've got to wait for Linfield to catch up their three games in hand. I'm not sure when they are. We have a quick look at the schedule. Did they get a result today? They did. So they're still the favourites for the title. They're seven points behind with three games in hand. The rest of their matches are Friday, Tuesday, Friday. So we're not going to find out who we're playing until next Saturday. We'll come back for that, find out who the fixtures are, and then we'll play the first game after it. Well, a slight change of plan because we have had our youth intake just three days later, and it is exciting for one player. We have got another centre-half as we had last year, and this time it's Connor Kingsbury rather than Connor O'Neill. It's an average intake overall. We've got one decent player after that and a couple with one-star ability. But let's be honest, the only one with a chance of making it is this centre-half here. Is he going to be good enough? Is he going to have balanced attributes? And most importantly, is he going to have a good personality? Let's find out together. Casual personality. The rest of his game's really good. And it's so frustrating. He's not got the best positioning in the world. But he's six foot five. He's great in the air. He's okay at everything else. But that casual personality will hold him back. We've seen it with so many players this year. They just don't improve it quick enough. So Connor Kingsbury, probably a bit of a disappointment. We'll give him a chance anyway, if we can. Well, Linfield have finally caught up on their fixtures and the league split has now been confirmed. Linfield have won all three of their games in hand by a goal to nil. It's an incredible effort, really. And we've had some other news in the last week too. Mainly, and a weird one, we had our transfer budget for next summer. Not sure how, when they don't know if we're going to be in Europe or not. But it does mean that we're no longer in debt on the wage bill because it's been up to four and a half grand a week, which is what we were paying rather than what we actually had as a budget. In terms of the top half split, though, we have now got five games coming up and I'm desperately hoping that Linfield is one of the home ones because that is our big money maker of the year. And it is indeed, as is Glen Torum, which is normally the second biggest. And Coleraine, probably of the five teams there, we've got three home games, which is great. And we've probably got the three biggest ones in terms of fan base coming down at home. So that is an excellent effort for us. We'll be back in a moment to face Coleraine. And it is probably our most winnable home one. Well, what a lovely way to return for the league split. We are expected to be defeated at home to possibly the weakest side on paper we're playing of the three. The fitness test suggests that Lewis Scott might make it. But I'll probably leave him on the bench because we're gearing towards those European playoffs now. And I don't want to risk missing out on star players for it. Let's go and get through to the team selection. 500 fans in. Not a great home crowd, to be honest. We've got another suspension for Daniels. He'll be replaced by Taylor Hart. And on the left wing, Convy will come in for Scott. He'll stay on the bench. McGill will come on for Daniels. And that is going to be the team. So the changes from the last game are basically enforced. Convy and Hart in. The suspended Daniels out. And the returning from injury, Lewis Scott sitting on the bench let's go and get into it the first of the final five games can we cause a shock at home and can we finally pick up some points against the big boys well here we go against Oren Kearney's side they've still got quality and attack McKendry keeps getting player of the week nearly every week in Northern Ireland Lyndon Kane I'm pretty sure scored against us last time Ryan Johnson's a good player Shevlin and Allen a brilliant attacking duo so let's just go and get through it Wayne Murphy's on the bench. We had him on loan a couple of years ago, didn't we? Good young right back. Not getting into their team either. So let's go and get into the first half. The smallest crowd we'll play in front of for the rest of this season. But fingers crossed, it won't deter us and we'll be able to get a good result. Though it's not a good sign that after one minute, it's a cold rain free kick. It's going to be a penalty kick. It was off the ball. It was a silly one. And it seems to happen a lot in this league compared to others. Those little pushes and pulls from set pieces, they seem to be given all the time, which they obviously aren't in real life. 
Chevlin takes the penalty and with two minutes gone, we have fallen behind to Coleraine and we have really shot ourselves in the foot. Probably game over at this point. What's worse is that they're now dominating the game as well. There's 15 gone. I'm tempted to drop to cautious. I tried to be a bit more aggressive in this one. I thought maybe it's the home game we can win. Not looking good at the moment. And that's a perfect example. Convy not attacking the ball, waiting for it to come to him. And these proactive top level players, or the top level players in Northern Ireland, I should say, They'll come and attack the ball. They'll come and nick it off you. But that's a long, hopeful ball towards McElhatton. Clearances as far as Convy, who wins his header. Coffey can't get to the second ball, and Cole Rayner first to it again. Gareth Dean plays out from the back. One of the best goalkeepers at this level. We've got to beat him today, though, if we want to get a result. McKendry on the counter-attack finds Allen. Has support from Shevlin, the goal scorer, but instead just plays himself through to Shevlin in the end, and it's into the side netting. Cole Rayner are tearing us apart. I'm going to drop to Cautious because we're getting outplayed as Gareth Dean goes long. Good header from Williams. The teeth are very narrow there. He's carrying the ball out wide now, trying to take it down the line. Has two options in support. Can play back. Instead puts a great early cross in. That's a super ball. Chris Latifa with a wonderful cross. Mukul Hatton attacking at the back post. All he had to do then was slide it in the bottom corner. It's 1-1. We definitely don't deserve it. But maybe that's an example of the counter-attacking. Very good individual work from Latifa and Mukul Hatton there to finish as Latifa's on his way again. What a moment he's having. Good cross again. O'Brien gets it away. McDonald finds him. Back to his goalkeeper, Dean. And it's a big punt downfield from Cole Rain. Little dangerous five minutes for them there as Williams gets it to Whitehall and Latifa. Here's Coffee on the right-hand side. Loses out. Williams will head it away again. We've got them camped in their own half, but can we take advantage? That's what I want to know in the rest of this half. Do not give away a silly goal. Dobbin picks it up again. Inside to Hart. He's made an impact. It's a good through ball. McElhattan will chase. McConville's there. Cleared as far as Convy. He cuts inside. Finds Hart. Referee trying his best to get in the way. Trying to help the big sides out. Dobbin through to Coffey though. It's a brilliant move. And that is five of our best minutes in a long time. Dobbin with the through ball, Coffee with the finish, two under Stillery. What a turnaround. And we're back almost immediately again as Williams has the ball just inside his own half. Short free kick to Hart and he's got support in midfield too. Goes back to Williams. We're inviting them on, trying to play those through balls. That is awful from Williams. He atones for his error though. Wins it back for Dobbin. He can carry down the right hand side. Inside to Hart. Having a strong game here. Back to Williams. Don't do anything silly this time. He doesn't. Good turn from Hart. Beats his man. Goes into the opposition half. Whitehall releases Coffey. McElhatton's in the middle. Coffey's brought down. It's a penalty kick. I'm not sure it was. It's one of those animations where it looks like they get the ball. But we're not going to complain. The voice is on the blink. That might be an issue. James Convey steps up. Rare start for him. And he doesn't take advantage from the spot. Should have given it to McElhatton. It stays 2-1. Maybe that's going to be another turning point. And on the stroke of half time, it's worryingly a free kick for Coleraine to the back post towards O'Brien. It's so simple. Where's the marking gone? The man at the back post loses his header and then McConville's in the middle. Nobody's near him. I mean, we've got four or five spare bodies in there. I don't know what they're doing. And at half time, it's 2-2. The missed penalty is another turning point. It's been a cracking game. We're still on for a point. But it could have been so much more. I tell the lads they're doing all right because it's better than we expected. And hopefully in the second half we can keep this result. Maybe we can even find a winner. Well, 20 minutes to go. There's not an awful lot happening in this half. So I'm going to make some adjustments. Scott is going to come on for Convy who missed the penalty. Orkin's having a poor game again. So Phil Jeffrey on for him. Curtis Bell struggling too. Might give Shea Lucas a little run out at left back. Hart will come off in midfield for Crow. Whitehall will switch to the playmaker role. And then looking forward, I put Orkin up front. How many times do I make these mistakes? Orkin off, Phil Jeffrey on. Pay attention to your subs. We learned that the hard way last season. Don't go making the same mistake again. We're back with just over 10 to go as Lyndon Kane puts a teasing ball into the box. It's cleared away by both Dobbin and Scott. And it's out to halfway to McConville. Lomble forward is headed away by Jeffrey as Crow gets it down for Coffey. He tries to play wide. That's an awful pass. Jeffrey clears it away, spares his blushes. Latifa gets down the right. Can he produce another magical moment? Go short to Crow this time. Play simple. Williams goes wide to Dobbin. Keeping it nicely. Some good football there. Not seen many of those sprayed balls about at the back before as Lucas gets it on the left-hand side. He goes wide to Scott, the substitute. Turns into Lucas and Whitehall. How many passes has this been? 
Doesn't matter. The hoof forward in the end was useless. It's all good keeping the ball for 30 seconds, but doesn't matter if you finish with that. As Allen goes from distance, it's just wide. Shevlin won his header too easily. And with 10 to go, Coffey's coming off. Awful mistake there at the back. Killian Heaney will get a run out as the 10. Can we nick a winner? Or are we going to be destined for a draw? It's been an even game. The penalty could have sealed it. But overall, given what we saw last game, given how we've played against the top sides most of this year, I'll take a point. That's a decent outcome. Starts another little unbeaten run. Keeps enough confidence in the camp ahead of the playoffs. So let's just say we're happy to avoid defeat. And now we'll deal with the last four off camera. Well, it's important to note at this point that the Irish Cup finalists have been confirmed and it's Linfield and Coleraine, two of the top three. What that means is that the playoff will be fourth to seventh. And if we finish in sixth place, we'll play fifth place Ballymena, I believe. That is our next game. We're going to enjoy that, get a bit of a warm up for it. They're the side that beat us in the final last year. And then we will be back. I think we'll just play through the four matches. We will come back for the European playoff. We know we're there. We know who we're probably going to be facing. So let's not make an extra episode. If we end up with a short one next time, we'll combine it with a season review just so it doesn't spoil what the outcome is. But if you did enjoy this episode, this appointment against Dungannon, but a decent effort against Coleraine, then please do put a thumbs up on it. Let me know what you thought of the youth intake star. I was a little bit underwhelmed by him. And do you think we can go one better this year? Or will we fall at the same hurdle again? Because we just don't look good enough against these top sides. If you want to stay up to date and find out though, please do subscribe and turn that notification bell on. Sure to be a big finish to the season as we head into the European playoffs again. But can we go into it in form? I highly doubt it with the games we've got left. We'll be back in a couple of days time with the answer. But in the meantime, you can find the head coach playlist and loads of other stuff up in the eye above. Please do check out yesterday's head coach. It was a brand new era for that save. And we'll be back here in two days time for another shot at Europe with Distillery. Mm -hmm.